Hey, what's up guys? I'm Alex from Zaxworks. In this tutorial, let's take a walkthrough through Zaxworks Pro Animator 7 and do a full project from start to finish. We'll talk about some key features in the program and how fast it really is to set up a full lighting scene. Okay, so right here is the project we're going to create right here. We have uh, some lens flares, some 3D light tr fixtures and a truss and beam shooting out of these fixtures, some words with some bevels and textures and even a floor and a curtain in the background. Cool. So the first thing to do is to create a new composition. We'll come up to composition, new composition. Make sure it's I'm, I have it 1280 by 720, 29.97 frames per second, and 10 second f duration. Good for now. Click OK, and we have our new comp. Now it's time to create our solid layer, new solid. Make sure it's the same size as your comp. Click OK. Come to effect and apply the Zaxworks Pro Animator effect. Cool. So now let's create an empty scene. Just so we have a blank slate, and it's time to create to open up the Pro Animator setup window and create our floor. We'll start off by creating the floor. So we'll just come up to our object menu, click Create 3D Primitive, and Ground. Now we'll come over to our Material Workspace, find our wood texture, and just drag it directly onto the floor, and there it is. Now we'll scale it down just by clicking on the thumbnail, and then coming over here to Scale and dragging it down. And notice it uh, moves as I as I scale it down. It's updating in the 3D preview window, which is nice. So now that we have our floor, let's create our 3D text. Come up to Object, Create 3D Text. Type in our text. We'll select all of the lights just by dragging over them. Then we will space them out because I'm going to have a thick bevel and reduce the letting. Great, now we'll click OK and all of our text will now be extruded and beveled automatically for us. Fast. Uh, now, however, we see that our object is on the same, our objects are on the same track. This means that when we animate the track, both the objects will move together. We don't want that, we want them on separate tracks. All we have to do is select our text block, drag out into this empty area, let go, and now our text block is on a new track. Cool. So now we'll come into our animation workspace, make sure our object two, track 2 is selected, and click on this checkbox to get three separate parameters for X, Y, and Z, and then we're just going to move our words in the positive Y direction, just so they look like they're sitting on top of the floor. Great, so now that they're there, we can hit render test to see what our full scene looks like. Perfect, it's time to put some materials and bevels and all that fancy stuff on it from object styles. We'll come into our material workspace, up to object style swatches and I'm going to use this object style and just drag it directly onto our text uh, with our text selected I'm going to deselect and just select it again um, we can see that we have this fancy look and bevel with an inset face and these three different materials all with a single drag and drop pretty cool great so now that we have this it's time to create the lights that are going to light up the front of the words here so we'll come into our animation workspace and we are going to create a light track. All lights have to be on a track. So we'll come to Track Commands, select Add Light Track. When we do that, we see we have one parallel light right here. We don't want a parallel light, we want a spotlight. So we'll just come into our parallel light options, select Spotlight, and we have a spotlight. So now I'm going to actually turn up this number to three, because I want three different lights. All I had to do is drag in there. And now I want to move it back in the, up in the Y direction, and back in the Z direction and mess around with the rotation just so it looks like it's lighting up the objects just right. Perfect. So now that we have this, let's turn on shadows because in real life, when lights are projected onto objects, shadows turn up on the floor area. However, in 3D space, this doesn't just happen automatically. We have to turn that on. So we'll come into our lighting workspace make sure our lights are selected by selecting the top one shift holding down the shift key select the bottom one now come over to our shadow casting option and turn on shadow casting so now when i'm just going to move the screen over so now when we hit render test we see we have these nice looking shadows all hitting with each other you know in the background looks really cool great so now we have our front light our shadows our floor and our text it's time to create the big truss in the background that uh, is going to have fixtures on it so we'll come back into our animation workspace, create one more light, create another light track, 
and we will change our light 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 truss right here to a ring box truss and we will turn on pipes slash trusses when we do that we see we have these this really nice looking circle truss circle box truss you know already created for us and modeled for us and we can now animate it or what I first want to do is I want to change the range right now it is a full circle I want a half circle so we'll just take the range down to 180 because that's half of 360 and um, now we have a half circle well then we'll rotate it around so it's pointing towards us and let's scale it up a lot just because we want some a nice big truss great now let's just position it in, in the right position we'll do that by making it go down in the y direction back in the z direction and rotating it up in the x direction perfect so now what we'll click on view front just so we can see the front view of it right now um, of our uh, animation and we see we have some nice text with a nice truss back there However, this truss right now has a parallel light. So let's switch that to spotlight. And then we see that the, the light is at the, actually at the bottom of this truss. So let's flip the entire truss over just by rotating in the Z direction. So we'll rotate the Z direction 180 degrees. And now it is on top. Perfect. So before we go on, notice that our truss is not being lit up by anything. You know there's no nothing lighting lighting up that actual truss so what we can do is we can create some another light that will shine directly down and light up this truss we can do that by selecting our light track come to track commands and click duplicate track this will give us the exact same everything but now we can turn off the truss so that it doesn't duplicate the truss and we can pull it up in the y direction and then we can do points light at point lights at down We'll say yes to undo our offsets. We don't want to mess anything up. And you see now that light is pointing down. That's perfect. However, there's not enough light. So I'm going to come in here and I'm going to increase the amount of lights to light up this track. Go to 10. And then I'm also going to do the same thing to this truss because I want more than just one light on the track. So we'll come in here and we will increase that to 10 as well. Perfect. So now we see that the truss is being lit up with white lights. I don't want white lights to light up the truss. I want multiple lights to light up the truss. So let's select the track that is lighting up that truss and let's come down to our color option right here. We can either just change one color or we can do different options like two colors or three color alternating or even just random colors down here. I am going to pick the random vivid at the very bottom. And now we see we have this nice looking colored truss that that when we deselect everything it looks you know it's looking pretty good um, cool so now let's go back to our light track 2 and let's create the light fixtures you know we have the truss right now but let's create actual the fixtures so we already have the spots of the lights where they're going to be the positioning but let's actually create the fixtures uh, we'll do that by going down here to the fixture menu right here selecting it and choosing one of the many options we uh, many fixtures uh, that come in the list. These all come with the program. You can also create your own and then put it in just in the proper folder and it'll, it'll show up in this list. Uh, that's another tutorial though. So I'll come into, I'll, I'll choose this fixture right here. And as I click that, we can see that these fixtures have been created over here, which is really nice. So let me zoom in so we can see what's going on. I'm going to turn off the light icons just so they don't get in our way. And we see we have these fixtures all up on our truss. And when we mess around with point lights at rotation, we see that they actually move around all together, which is really cool. You know, it's really hard to get all these lights to move together, especially when the program is doing it for you. That's perfect. Cool. <clears throat> so now we have the light fixtures. Let's create the light beams that are coming out of the fixtures. We'll do that by coming down here to the light co material and selecting another one of these options. I'll select this Bordeaux beam. And we can then come over here to our spot angle and change the spot angle. We can either have something really skinny like a light beam or something really fat that you know just kind of washes out the entire scene with light. So I'll come towards the more skinnier spectrum of things. And now when we move things around, we can see that the light beams work accordingly to the light fixtures, which, look, which are hooked to the light truss. Perfect. <coughs> 
So now that we have that, let's change the color of our lights once again. So we'll come into our color options, click on two color alternating, and change this white color to a red color. Reddish color, and this is exactly what I want. So there we go. Cool. Now it's time to actually animate our lights. We can do that by using this point lights at command. Well, we'll do that when we click on this point lights at command, we can choose one of these many. We can either just do them all left or all right or you know away from the origin or at the origin. We can either even do selected objects. So like if there's an object moving, the lights will follow that object, which is pretty cool. So for right now though, however, we're going to pick on origin. I would say yes, I want to undo my offsets. I'm going to go to the front view just so I can see what this looks like. And now the lights are pointed at the origin. And when I rotate them in the negative X direction, they actually do a nice fanning out motion, which is exactly what I want. Perfect. So I'll have them start pointing down. And then I will double click in the timeline right around here and move the X direction to the negative direction. So they point start. So they end in the up position. So now they start down they rotate up in nice fanning motion. So notice this is sort of like keyframing. You have the first keyframe where you set the position, there's the second keyframe where you set the other position, and the animation goes in between the two. However, we have 20 plus objects on a single track right here. So this is not like keyframing. We don't have to worry about each object separately. If you mess up one, you have to, if you want to change one, you have to change all of them. If you want to change one in Pro Animator, you get to change one track, which is really nice. Cool. So now that that's done, let's create the really pretty flares that are going to come out of these light fixtures. We can do that by selecting the track that we want the flares to be attached to, come into Track Commands, and click Add Flare Track. When we do that, we see we automatically get these nice flares coming out of these beams, uh, out of these uh, fixtures. So now when I zoom in, we can see that actually when I move the camera around, the flares will get smaller as they come on screen come to their full size and will go smaller as they come off screen too, which is perfect. It's exactly how we want. It's exactly how lens flares are supposed to look like. Cool. So now, however, I don't want this flare. I want a different flare. So I'm going to come over here to my flare swatches panel and I can choose any one of these 50 plus flares that come free with the program. Um, I'm going to come down. I'm actually going to choose this nice rumba flare. I will just take it and I will drag it directly onto this swatch let go and that flare will automatically be replaced perfect however the flare right now is a little too large so let's go to flare scale let's scale it down and then let's come over to our use light color and turn that on and what that'll do is it'll use our light color to for the color of our flares too so that we get this really nice alternating color that looks really pretty with our light beams as well perfect so now we have the animation that we want with our light flares and our light fixtures and our tresses and our words. However, now let's animate our words. We'll just do that by selecting our object track two and come into our object animations, fragmentations and select bit shift. That's the one I have for this animation. And that will have the words come on staggered, you know, all they're, they're fragmented up. It looks pretty nice. And then one more thing before we finish is I'm going to create a camera track. We'll click on the camera track button right here. We can also get to it by track commands, add camera track. I will then take this first pose, put it, put my camera where I want my first pose to look at. I want to kind of zoom in up right here. And then I will double click in the time pan on the uh, animation timeline. And I will zoom back out, click on view front. And move down. Perfect, so now we have our lights are starting inwards as they're coming up, our camera's moving backwards, and we get these really pretty flares, and our words come onto the screen. Perfect, so now remember, we are still inside of After Effects, so all we have to do is come over here, click OK, and our animation is now put into our After Effects scene. So we can add anything we want to our to our animation. We can, we can put some particles in the scene, we can put some you know, color correction, we can do any adjustments, anything we want right inside of After Effects. Great, hope this helps. For more awesome tutorials, visit the Zaxworks website. See you guys soon.